uh, in this you know session of computer uh, live session of computer architecture i am dr santosh kumar vishwakarma and i am working in manipal university jaipur so i hope uh, you people have gone through the earlier sessions and it's a good change that we are going to have so uh, not only when i asked you to ask questions if you feel so in between also ki uh, there is a question there is a doubt so you can just interrupt me and you can ask uh, any questions okay so it's uh, it's very good to have all of you live in this session and it's better that whenever you feel uh, there's some doubt or you want more explanation from my side so it it will be a very good practice for all of us that's good okay so uh, i don't know how many of you were present in my previous session but uh, in in previous uh, or last week i have started with this uh, memory hierarchy technology okay which is uh, unit 8 uh, you know of uh, unit uh, yes unit 8 uh, of your according to syllabus and we have discussed uh, in this thing into two perspective okay so there are different learning objectives and uh, let us go ahead with uh, you know understanding of all the terminologies of all the component that of your syllabus so that we can get it uh, the learning objective also so if you can recall or if you have been present uh, you know in previous week i have shown you uh, a memory hierarchy okay and there are actually uh, two differences that we need to concern and, and uh, that was first of all based on we need to understand everything in terms of operating system perspective okay uh, any student please reply my screen is visible and audible properly i request any of the student please uh, reply okay might be okay it may possible that you have been uh, you know muted so no issues uh, so you know we have uh, gone through this uh, topic uh, actually once we understand the memory hierarchy if directly i will move into the ca part that is computer architecture part so it will not be a proper you know way of going through until you don't understand the basic terminology concept which we have taken from operating system okay let me let me uh, interact with any one of you ankita uh, so let me check can i unmute allow mic okay so ankita gangwani uh, please let me know i am audible Okay, if I am audible properly, please raise your hand. Yes, sir, you are properly audible. And perfect. Your screen perfect. is also right. visible. Perfect. Please let me know. Like, uh, can I? Uh, how can I interact with the students? Whether uh, can I unmute them? Yes, sir. You can just try to unmute anybody who had raised the hands. So I need to this, uh, you know, uh, but there is a sir, option to disable mic. Sir, just write the participant and check whether you have an option to unmute them. Allow you uh, unmute them. no i don't have the option sir you have option to make them presenter okay okay fine okay yes yes that option is there sir you make them presenter and uh, then they are able to enable uh, sir just click disable mic and enable mic then also you, you can enable them okay okay perfect perfect that's good okay so uh, i request all the students to please uh, you know lower your hand uh, the digital hand that you have raised so thank you i hope i am properly audible and in between uh, i will just come up with certain questions or uh, the forum will be open for your doubts then we can i will make you presenter or i will just uh, you know disable your mic that will be perfect so please lower your hand i can go ahead okay fine so i am just going to uh, run my ppt so in previous week uh, we have gone through learning this memory te uh, technology or memory hierarchy in terms of operating system perspective and that was such a you know uh, some very nice question from your side at the last i was be, i have been so happy that at least os perspective many of the students have are in a very track they have asked so many good questions second was uh, the computer architecture perspective and they are siblings okay why siblings because you know many of the terminologies that we introduce in operating system it's going to be used in uh, computer architecture part let me let me just give me 5 or 10 minutes of time i will show you what we have learned earlier in operating system so i have shown you actually uh, the basic uh, hierarchy uh, and how the os is going to play its role 
So I have mentioned this that uh, for operating system we may come up with the concept of blocks. That's very important. Okay. So blocks is you know it's a division or subdivision of uh, memory that we used to say, and it may be uh, fixed, it may be variable, depend on the conditions. Now every block can be identified through the base value. All right. I repeat again, every, in memory terminology, every block can be recognized through the base value. Like suppose zero is the base for this block, this two five six triple zero is the base for the second block, and so on. So that is very important. And limit is the capacity. What's the capacity of this block? Okay. So this was introduced. Then I hope you understand this diagram also, where I have mentioned that CPU generate logical address. Okay. CPU generate logical address, and that needs to be mapped to physical address. So you have this uh, memory, the actual main memory. CPU generates logical address and that's converted into uh, physical memory. That diagram also I will show. We have discussed some basic concepts also. And I'm just showing this is just a recap. OK, so I'm not going to repeat everything because this is already covered in the previous week. OK, so first of all, we have discussed about logical address and then uh, physical address also. Let me show you through diagram also. So CPU uh, always generate logical address. OK. And the entire set of logical address is known as logical address space. Now this, uh, you know, memory management unit converts the logical into physical. Again, obviously, this is a hardware unit which requires its own orientation, which requires its own set of architecture, which converts into physical address. All right, and then we can have uh, the final. This is main memory. Yeah, already we have done this. I have shown you an example. Just give me one minute to repeat that. Uh, suppose CPU generated a address that is 346. Now 346 is in the territory of logical address space. Okay, so CPU has this logical address, but this is not going to be this memory is the actual memory, main memory or primary memory. So this 346 is going to be converted into the physical address. I repeat, logical is going to be converted into physical address, and we have uh, you know one hardware known as relocation register. So this base register is also known as relocation register. Now this relocation register has a fixed value. This is one of the instances. Don't uh, don't uh, misunderstood like this. That every time it's going to be like this. This is one of the instances I'm showing you. So this uh, 346 has been uh, you know combined with this with a certain limit, and then you have 14 346 which comes to the physical address. So this is the conversion. How the conversion take place? I think I should uh, not take so much of time because this thing has been repeated. And I have also shown you that, uh, you know, user program and logical uh, address CPU, because as a user, you give the program to CPU for execution and it gives you logical address, which converts into physical by use of memory management unit. OK. We have also seen that fixed partition and variable partition, as you can see, there's a terminology that I want and paging also have explained in, in very depth. I have given special attention to paging. Because uh, ultimately, once we are going to understand everything in terms of, you know, computer architecture perspective. So you must understand the terminology used in operating system used or given by operating system. I have also given you the address transition scheme today when I will teach you uh, or we'll have a discussion in terms of architecture point of view. Again, we will understand that how that offset uh, and the base value or otherwise page number or page offset. OK, will is considered. I have shown you this uh, hardware. OK, so if uh, students want, I will just explain in a nutshell. I have seen certain queries, uh, you know, in the LMS also. So I just I will take just one or two minutes of time to explain this again. Please take a note of this, although it's 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 uh, basically concerned with, uh, you know, operating system perspective, but it's very important for you people to understand this. OK, so I will just go through this that this is the main memory. And one of the example of main memory is RAM. So this RAM memory, as you understand that RAM may be of 2 GB, 4 GB, 8, 16, 32 and so on. So this RAM has been partitioned like this and this partitions are known as blocks. So there are various blocks. OK, and the RAM work like this. Now, uh, you know, the data is supposed to be stored or to be accessed through what the RAM, which is also known as physical or the primary memory primary memory. Some author also uh, write this as what main memory. So we have this classification as main memory. OK, now uh, you know the CPU again. There's a user 
user gives her program to cpu cpu generate a logical address and that logical address has been uh, you know as part of p and d it has shown okay so this is a logical address which has been shown through p and d where p stand for page number okay this p stand for page number and d stand for displacement or offset okay d stand for displacement or offset so this p and d has been done now there will be concept of page table so page table means the page which cpu has given is going to be stored or is going to be accessed in which frame so for every page there will be a frame number which is mentioned in page table okay so this is just a matrix between p and f correlation between p and f and once you have pf like suppose i am searching for uh, so page number 3 and page number 3 is in 10 frame number 10 so you can have this now this uh, 3 and suppose displacement d is converted into 10 and this uh, displacement d so you will come to this uh, frame 10 and you will get the data like this so this is a mapping convention so the basically uh, the concept is that you should be aware of this concept uh, logical address and the physical address okay so uh, students if there is any doubt just raise your hand for this diagram i will just check for a minute and if you have any doubt on this so uh, i will just uh, be very happy to address your any of the issues okay so i will check for any problem fine so there are so many uh, hand raise let me have one or two questions i think uh, i will take question from uh, disable mic okay ankita are you able to speak now ankita or kalyan kalyani i'm sorry kalyani sahu allow mic okay by this way i'm going to make you allow so i have just allowed one of the participant please if you have any doubt on this you can ask see the intention of this you know convert of this forum is that we should be go through direct live question and answering so you can have more competency so i have allowed one participant if can you can you uh, unmute yourself i have done that okay i think there is some issue kalyani kalyani uh, let me have a presenter yes kalyani uh, am audible yes sir yeah yeah just raise your question sir this diagram is uh, in this diagram i have doubt yeah please tell me what's your doubt uh, sir p and d what is uh, denotes okay okay fine fine okay so thank you for your question let me show you this let me i hope uh, you have gone through the previous diagram okay i will have a separate slide for your answer okay so that will make the things uh, very clear i will have a new slide and we'll go through enter okay now suppose uh, you are a programmer and you have written a program so can you unmute yourself yes sir i have unmuted okay so uh, this is cpu suppose for your program that is a piece of code cpu uh, generated any uh, you know uh, this address that is known as what logical address okay logical address has been given by cpu and this address is like this uh, suppose 2 and i can say 3 okay so what i said earlier that this 2 stand for page number okay page number and this 3 stand for displacement displacement or otherwise in many books it is offset displacement and offset now let us try to understand what is the meaning of this because once we'll talk about memory so suppose this is a part of memory and in memory there will be blocks there will be blocks and every block there will be some you know starting address and then some displacement what is displacement suppose uh, if it starts with zero then we can have say one and two and then three then again one Two and three. Now inside a block, see we can have different components. Suppose it start with zero, then we can have one, two, three. Suppose you are, if you are storing A, B, C, then D, E, F. 
so i can ask you that what is the offset for b so you will say sir offset for b is this 2 so like suppose this is the page number the page number is suppose say 5 then you can say what is the page number i'm getting so much messages uh, i request a uh, participant to please mute yourself okay so this is the thing so that is uh, displacement that's the address inside that page okay so in this case 2 and 3 is there so this is the logical address which is given by ppu now what is this is memory and in memory we will have the actual address so how this is going to be converted so first of all this will be input to a page table okay so there will be a component known as page table in page table you will have two columns first column will be page number so there will be page number and second there will be frame number frame number now again you will have a doubt sir what is frame number so i will let you know this memory has been divided into different blocks and they are nothing but frame number frame numbers so i can say this is frame number 2 frame number 4 this is frame number 6 and frame number 8 and so and so on like suppose now this uh, cpu generates logical address 2 and 3 so this will come map to this page table which is a hardware okay so hardware structure implemented now 2 3 so suppose this page number 2 is has been stored in frame number suppose 8 for example page table give you the information that page number 2 which we are seeking for key actually what is the actual address this is just a virtual kind of stuff so this 2 is mapping 8 okay it means that you get the actual address the address is what uh, address is 8 and this displacement will be same as 3 it will be same as 3 so you got this address 8 3 so this is the conversion see this you get as this logical address and once you have this this is known as physical address now what is the meaning of this the meaning is that your data your operand is stored in frame number 8 and displacement is 3 so it means that you come to this frame number 8 you come over here and this 3 you find out suppose the first one is uh, say 0 then 1 then 2 and then 3 again so okay, suppose in this 3 there is written as x so you got the data you have been so happy that cpu generate something and by all this conversion you got your data x equal to what's your value this may exist so this is the way of uh, finding the data kalyani did you got the answer yes sir i got thank okay. you so this is the main objective of the uh, table fine perfect so that's good uh, now i will not take so much of time because everything all this thing has been repeated i have shown everything uh, in the previous example uh, uh, sorry in the previous session and you can always refer that video to understand in a better manner okay because we have described everything now let us go to uh, you know the content for today all this thing has been done i was just repeating that you must understand okay how the things has been used and what is the basic terminology so operating system perspective that was covered in the previous session or previous uh, live class now i am going to discuss computer architecture perspective and that is the main motive of uh, today's lecture right okay so uh, let me go through this uh, points that may have some sort of uh, pre uh, conditions so memory uh, vary in terms of uh, design i hope you agree capacity and speed of operation you might heard about different type of memory like uh you know some memory consists of you know 1 terabytes or 256 or 512 gb and some memory like ram is very limited so we'll discuss all this thing so memory vary in terms of design capacity and speed main memory directly this is the best part i will show through diagram also main memory directly deals with the computer okay and the auxiliary memory which we used to say secondary memory okay so secondary memory provides backup storage capacity which is not directly accessible by cpu now there is a very fast and efficient memory just to speed up everything that is known as cache memory it's a high speed memory which boost up the speed of computation by providing the required data to cpu at very high speed so this is the overall you know in a in a indexing point of view i have talked about but i need to have a brief discussion of everything over here in previous session also i have shown you this diagram that uh, you know first of all cpu cpu consists of various registers and this is somehow be you know very fast thing to work with cpu because these registers are part of cpu so this is the first one 
then we can have cache and obviously there are different levels of cache memory like l1 l2 l3 and so forth it may be a static ram and then there's a main memory which is also dram this is a this is the classification and then we can have the higher side of memory known as secondary memory so as you can see volume wise this pyramid justify the statement volume wise the registers are very small but performance wise they are very high because they are inbuilt in cpu itself cost wise also they are very high and on the same pattern we can go and we see that our hard disk as you can see the example of the secondary memory is your hard disk this is ram okay so there are various example as you can see they grow according to volume but as far as like performance they have the degradation if you just go through if you follow this thing so this is the fastest one now i have also show you this hierarchy uh, just on the perspective of you must understand how the communication is going to be take place because cpu can communicate with uh, you know all type of memory i will not limit uh, now cpu can communicate because i'm just going to show you different models also you know, of communication also but cache is very fast i think approximately 10 times faster than this main memory and this is a use because cpu is very fast the speed of cpu is very fast to match that speed we need to have this cache memory okay now uh, and this is auxiliary memory in the diagram itself now the class starts with this that uh, we because you know in our computer architecture perspective we mostly we need to understand the cache memory okay what are the mapping techniques what are the replacement methods and how the updates has been done and what are the multi-level cache so i will just uh, like uh, have a horizon of completing uh, you know the entire syllabus what is the remaining uh, with reference to all these five points and if you feel so any questions so we'll take the question one by one what i will do i can have some blank slides okay that will be quite good because we are learning on that mode so it's better i can have uh, not one can take more also I've taken so many blank slides and I'm just going to write now. And in between, I will uh, give you the forum open to ask any of the questions that you may have. Okay. Now, there may be two types of memory organizations. Okay. So, memory organization may be of two types. The first type maybe simultaneous simultaneous access memory hierarchy memory hierarchy now it's clear from the name itself now like suppose if you have the cpu over here cpu and CPU, obviously, it has the very fast part of memory as registers where we can store the variables. So the CPU now, because we have understood that there may be different levels of uh, cache. Okay. So suppose I'm showing you uh, there is a L1, the first cache. Okay. Then there may be L2. We can have different levels. L2 cache. All these are cache part of cache memory. We can have uh, main memory, main memory, and we can have also the secondary memory or auxiliary memory that just now you have seen secondary memory because we are talking about the organization and basically we need to understand the concept in terms of cache, okay, cache memory. So first of all, it may possible that CPU may have simultaneous access to all the memories. First of all, like it can communicate to the first level, the highest one, the first one then it can also communicate to the L2 and so forth. It can also communicate to main memory, okay? And it can also communicate to the secondary memory. But this is not the by default choice. I'm just showing you that you must have a clarity that, sir, how CPU can be attached to, you know, what are the mode of different organizations. So believe me, you can just map all that memory which are available, CPU can communicate with all. Although there are pros and cons of that. Don't, don't uh, worry about that. I will show you through examples. But this is again a strategy that CPU can communicate to different levels of cache as well as main memory simultaneously. So that's why the name given simultaneously. But this is not the generic, not the generic, not used by all, you know, operating systems or the hardware structure, right? We'll go through the second one. The second is by the name itself. You can find out this is known as hierarchical, hierarchical access memory. 
okay and this is the by default choice this is the by default choice this is the by default choice now what does it mean it means now now we need to show everything in hierarchy so first of all cpu is the origin because everything start from central processing unit or the processor in between we can have uh, you know uh, the registers which is the fastest storage area inside cpu now we can work out with different uh, memory you know like suppose first of all there is cache so cache l1 i can also take the second one cache l2 and the cpu can communicate to this i can also like going to teach you some formulas that may be very useful to understand the entire concept also so then there will be a uh, main memory there will be main memory and then you can have uh, the secondary memory okay then you can have the secondary memory i hope all of you are clear this is a hierarchy what's the hierarchy the cpu is not going to communicate directly with l2 or cpu is not going to communicate uh, directly with main memory as you can see here the flexibility was cpu can communicate any of that okay uh, that was the flexibility simon delays but this is not a by default choice what i said this is somehow implemented in all modern uh, systems okay so this one now what is uh, you know uh, the ideology it means that first of all there will be registers as well as communication is concerned there may be uh, what i can say cache then we can have ram and then finally we can have the very famous example hard disk or tape so what does it mean it means registers are part of uh, this one the cache we can have various cache type l1 l2 l3 and so on you can have main memory also that is the ram and obviously the secondary memory as hard disk so this is the organization okay now how uh, you know what i said that it's it's uh, you know implemented in all systems all you know modern systems so how to access data this is a very important point that may come across your mind how to access data like suppose any data which uh, which is stored over in secondary memory so how cpu is going to access that because you know the concept is that we want efficiency and boss everything to be in very fast let me show you how suppose for with any example like suppose you have some data over here that is in secondary memory which is a permanent storage this memory is here some data that you are searching for it is there now from this location okay you want everything you know cpu want to access that so first of all because of hierarchy cpu is not going to communicate directly with secondary memory so this will come over here that is in main memory this may pass to this l2 it may come to l1 and then you can find out and that will be accessible to uh, the central processing unit or cpu this is the, this is the way the things work okay this is the way the things work and directly we cannot communicate so that is a by default choice and we have so many strategies in terms of conversion or transfer of this either it is block or words that we'll see so this was the main motive to to get the starting one i repeat again simultaneous access memory there are again pros and cons of both but please have a clear concept that both are possible first one is simultaneous and second is the hierarchical memory access now coming to few other points uh, let us go through this that because uh, this is uh, i said that by default choice so most of the time i will speak for this only so this uh, you know the cpu registers generally they come up in terms of kb it may be few kb because the size is very limited it's embedded into the processor itself so it consists of few uh, kilobytes and then this cache memory although it's a multi level cache so still it may be like 6 mb and so on so there may be few or more than that also is possible so this is the size of cache memory and then uh, main memory you may have heard about that you may have uh, you know 8 16 32 you know the day has gone when we work with uh, mb now everything works in gb itself so we can have some sort of uh, you know in gb basically i'm just taking a live example and in this secondary memory that is hard disk you may have you know 512 gb or nowadays you can have 1 terabyte also this kind of memory stuff so this is you know um, the capacity wise this comes in kb this comes in mb okay main memory comes in gb but uh, you know as far as the speed is concerned so this has the highest speed and so on so let me show you time to access also so if i can show uh, over here yes it's possible so i can show suppose the timing to access this is t1 that cpu register is t1 this is t2 this is t3 and this is t4 i think you will not have a single point doubt that uh, the registers are very fast so t1 is less than t2 okay very fast t2 is less than t3 and t3 uh, you can say you know 
compared to T4 as far as access time is concerned. All right. Now you may be worried that how uh, you're going to understand the things because this comes a very broad picture. So let me show you that this T1, that's uh, CPU registers. This is deal with uh, compilers. If you know compilers, so compilers or, you know, there has been a uh, different phases of compilers like lexical analysis, syntax, semantic, and there's a uh, phase known as code optimization. So in that code optimization, as a as a you know system engineer, you have that opportunity, you have that flexibility that you can code these registers also. You can have uh, in C also. I have gone through this keyword register. So in that register, you can store the value in register, register this uh, CPU processor register itself, and you can have the fastest of fastest of execution. So that is uh, into the territory of compilers and compiler. Who write the compiler? The programmers. Okay. Now the second is uh, this uh, you know working with cache that you people are supposed to learn, and that is nothing but the cache organization and it belongs to uh, computer architecture. Okay, computer architecture, I can also say computer organization also because this deals with hardware part that we are going to discuss today. Okay, so this second part cache is all about uh, computer hardware and that briefly I'm going to teach you all or discuss with you all. And this terminology, this main memory and secondary memory, lot of concepts related to, uh, you know, logical address, physical address, paging, framing. So you might understand this is the job of operating system that I have covered in the previous week and today itself I've started with this. So this is a secondary memory dealing, even if there's a concept file system, you know, a, a Windows file system or NTFS file system, all that stuff. So this, this managed by operating system that we are not going to study. Again, operating system memory that we have already covered that was very important in terms of memory organization and paging and hardware what I've shown. And today itself, Kalyani asked the question I have answered in terms of table. It's very really important that page table. And then the cache organization, which is deal with our subject computer architecture. Okay. And we'll not talk about this also, that CPU, which is uh, the compiler's part. All right. So, students, is there any question at this moment of time? Yeah. So uh, anyone of you have any question, you may please uh, ask. So the forum is open and then I will move to the next uh, topic. Okay. Shen Sarkar. Allow Mike. So I've allowed you, Mike. You can please uh, come up with a doubt. Sayan Sarkar. If I'm audible to you, you can. You can come up with your question. Okay, science Sarkar, you have been presented. Can you come up with your doubt, please? Kalyani, do you have any question? Any students, if you have questions, you may please come up. To be, uh, I will allow you, Mike. Sir, can you hear me? Yes, Sudhir, I can hear you. Please go ahead, Beta. Thank you. So, uh, my question is about uh, translation. Uh, so, yeah. in the page table, uh, uh, what kind of addressing is used to search in the page table? Is it virtual or real? No, for, as far as like page table is concerned, because page table is going to act as an index. All right. And page table, we are not there to find out any sort of addressing. We are just there to find out what is the corresponding frame number for the given page number. Okay. So, uh, so my question was related yeah. to uh, uh, paging hardware, sir. Oh, perfect, so, perfect. That's very nice. Good. Any other questions, Sudhir? That's all, sir. Okay, okay, fine. Good. Any other students have any question? 
just raise your hand okay so let me go ahead and i just want to uh, demonstrate few concepts related to uh, the cache memory in terms of hit and miss ratio so you must be able to understand how the things work in an actual scenario so uh, shall i proceed further okay please sir yeah, yeah thank you thank you So this is a very important concept. Uh, you know that we are going to. So you please uh, mute yourself, students. There's a question for you. Why the default model? Why the default model? Default model is the hierarchical model. As we have seen, we may have two now. But why I have spoken again and again, spoken about uh, this that hierarchical data model is not data model; it's a memory organization is going to be the default one. So there are a lot of options and a lot of you know the things to be considered. But let me go into this that CPU. Okay, so when CPU interact with cache memory, this interacts with uh, main. I'm just writing MM main memory and then secondary memory. So this is the organization I have shown you in hierarchical. Okay, so now let's consider about the unit also. Okay, because I'm going to throw you some numerical questions. So this CPU, uh, you know, interacts with cache in terms of what words, word words, and sometimes one word equal to some bytes also. Now this cache and main memory, this works in terms of what blocks. Some people it's call it in different other terms also, but now we will take it as a block. And then this is what pages. So this is the bifurcation in terms of although all, everyone is memory, but you know the terminology may be different. Now the cache can be, you know, this is. Ten times faster than the main memory. As you can see, that once the CPU interacts with this uh, memory, so we require control unit or control buses. As earlier discussed, also we also require the address bus, which may specify what is the address in the memory, and we also require the data part, the data bus. This is somehow in short of what communicating CPU with memory. Now. There is a main concept why we use this hierarchical. That's why the question why the default method. So the, there is you know again I repeat there are two or three major answers. But what I need to focus and what I need to communicate in front of you people is that locality of reference, locality of reference. You may just note it down somewhere and whenever time permits, you may just find it out. You can just Google it. What is locality of reference? But I am because this locality of reference is a very generic point. It's a very generic topic. That is used in multiple perspective of computer systems, not only in architecture. I will speak about in terms of you know computer architecture, but you can really find out what's the locality of reference in other examples also in other areas of computer science also. Now, what is it that I need to focus? Locality of reference can be defined as two part. The first is temporal or spatial, spatial, and second is temporal. Okay. And this is used in, I hope I can rise most of the systems. Most of the system, this is used locality of reference for address binding. Now, how does it mean and how you are going to understand this? Let me show you that. And that is the main thing that we used, uh, you know, the, this component. Because if this hierarchy model is used, somehow if there is some memory which is going to use again and again, so we identify this, that can be part of cache. And if it is in the cache, Definitely, it's going to be very fast in terms of CPU. And not only CPU, sometimes we put some part in register also. The only thing is that are we able to identify this as a programmer? If we can identify some sort of code or program that is going to be used again and again, that I'm going to explain in terms of locality of reference. So just give me some time. Okay, I'll show you this. Uh, if I will talk about spatial locality, spatial locality of reference, and then also I will take the example of temporal and how this can be used of. Uh, in cache memory. So what happened in spatial locality? Suppose if you're working with a memory part, I'm just showing you a snapshot of the memory. You have different blocks like this. So there are three or four blocks. And suppose uh, th there has been some sort of looping done over here or some sort of programming. This is a program P, uh, say P1. And this program has certain codes. And this is like, suppose a loop, loop construct, which again repeated again on the same pattern. It means that again and again, we are referring the same, you know, uh, addressing same address mode or you can same offset mode in this block if the things are going to be repeat. So what does it mean? It means that this is suppose, uh, you know, the main memory or your RAM. So what I understand that this piece of memory 
or this piece of code is repeated again. So that is my special locality. What I will do, I will just put this block into what the cache part. I will just have this into the cache, cache machine, and definitely then interacting with CPU will be quite faster because everything that is be repeated, I identified this and that has been part of cache. So it means that there is no need to go again and again that in terms of pace table I have taught you earlier. Now, in case that is special locality, we identify the space. Now, in case of temporal, like suppose you identify that uh, there are certain variables, say i, j, and k. And by any means, suppose you are done, you have going through any program in which you got the value of i, after some time you got the value of j, and then sometime you got i again, then j again, some sort of you know understanding, some sort of repetitions like this. So what you found that? You found that all that majority of chunks, they are, they are just referring i and j, i and j again and again. Here you were just spacing. I'm not talking about this uh, variable. Here the space was there for reference. Here the variables. So you got i and j. So why not to put this i and j into from, if this is main memory, why not to put into cache memory? If I can put in cache memory this i and j, then definitely we have understood the concept of locality of reference and temporal. What are the values which are considered again and again? This is a very important concept. So by this only, what we do, we find out the same concept, put it in cache, and by this CPU can access and thus make the things very clear. Now, uh, based on this locality of reference, because this is a major area of concern and many of that, you know, uh, operating system perspective and CA perspective, they have implemented this. But uh, I also wish to communicate a very important topic that is some sort of, uh, you know, understanding of uh, a very important formula. So I will speak on both because that may be your syllabus. So first is, suppose the where I started, simultaneous access. Okay, simultaneous access, and then I will take the hierarchical access. But again, I repeat, this is not a by default choice, but you should be ready with the questions, okay, and the understanding also, because this may trigger you to understand some more concepts, okay. So, Sam, what is simultaneous access? Let me show you again from where I started, where CPU is in the central part, and you can interact with each and every memory, okay. So, I will just repeat this to understand the concept. So, there is a CPU, the processor. Now there is different cache level memory, L1, L2, and so on. And there will be, say, different L3 and cache because I'm dealing with cache mostly. So LN. Now, uh, as you have this thing, I can also relate this that we can communicate with this simultaneous access. If something is not found in L1, then CPU can interact with L2 and so and so. Apart from this, also we mention H1 and T1. So H stand for hit ratio. Okay, and T is the time to access that stage. Okay, suppose this is level one cache stage, level two. For this, there will be H2, T2. Uh, there, this three will be S3, T3, and so on. This will be HN, HN, and TN. Basically, I'm going to derive one formula. Based on that, your understanding will be very clear. So, but uh, this L1, L2 are different levels of cache. I will just write this is cache memory. Please understand, same stand for cache memory over here. Now, H, what is H? So you may be worried what is H. So I will just write H is hit ratio. H stand for hit ratio. Hit ratio or hit rate also. This word is very common. And this hit radio ratio is number of hits. Number of hits divided by number of access. How many times you access? Number of access. Okay. Suppose you access 10 times in this L1. 10 times you access out of 10 times. You eight times you find out the data you're looking for. So what is the hit ratio? It is 80%. Okay. And miss ratio is just complement of that. So what is the miss ratio? So miss ratio is number of miss, number of miss divided by total number of access. Total number of access. Suppose two times you miss out of 10, so it is 20%. And obviously, you know their complement. So if it is 80%, it will be definitely 20%. So this is, you know, hit and miss ratio. Now, the thing is that this uh, hit ratio will be definitely between 0 to, in between 0 and 1. Now, what is this T1, T2, T3 that you need to understand? So T1 is the time, T1 is the time to access data from L1 cache. Okay, suppose CPU is interacting with L1. So uh, obviously it will uh, require some time to access that I've mentioned with T1. Similarly, you can find out T2. So T2 is the time access from L2 cache. T3 is the time 
from n3 cache and so on okay so this is the thing now you need to understand that uh, uh, what is the average time so let me continue with this i will just write continue over here for the next slide because the formula is going to derive in this diagram also whenever you have difficulty okay in terms of deriving formula or to understand this always remember this okay my diagram itself is able to speak something so from this diagram we understand that cpu interacts with any of the level cache and h1 t1 signifies the cache of for hit ratio and t1 stand for time now i need to find out and this has been a typical question also ki what is the average time if we are using the simultaneous access the simultaneous access what is the average time average access time to get the theta average access time is a very important formula so i will just write t average t average equal to now suppose if uh, i have been very lucky in first instance i got this the whatever data i am searching for so i got this so suppose this is a hit ratio huh so it means that uh, the value is hit whatever you are searching for and the time will be the access although i am just having a hit over here but still it will take its time and that is t1 so in first case it will be h1 t1 that is the hit okay divide uh, hit into t1 that is time access for getting that data now suppose if uh, in first level cache first of all sorry first of all cpu will search in this part and suppose the data has not been found over here data is not present over here in l1 it start with l1 but next it will go to l2 okay then what will happen for that will time will be it will be first of all there is a miss so miss is the complement of hit so it is 1 minus h1 and then it found in s2 so s2 and then t2 so this is for if the data has been found in l2 cache and suppose if it is doesn't found in l2 cache then obviously there will be plus sign so what is plus so plus it is it is not found in first level cache it is not found in second level cache it has been found in s3 so time will be s3 t3 hence for you understand this suppose it may continue and at last it may go up to what it may go up to 1 minus h1 okay then 1 minus h2 and so on till 1 minus h n minus 1 okay and hn and tn what is our assumption that obviously if data is not available in l1 l2 l3 definitely it will be there in l1 what we understand that this is going to be one so data will be there so that's we have assumed that the data had been found in this so that is a t average time okay so uh, this is you know the formula that you must understand giving any value you must be able to apply that and based on that suppose in many uh, computer architecture system one word okay it derive for t average time that suppose if you want to access any single word so it may take up to this average time all right and uh, number of memory access it's also done number of memory access memory access is equal to 1 upon t average okay that was the first formula that may be words per second i hope uh, students you understood this and and because the lack of time i will just show you the second one second formula and then i can take your questions also so again i repeat this is for simultaneous access please do recall this diagram and if i can show you for hierarchical access for hierarchical access immediately the diagram must come up in your mindset what is it i have shown you start with uh, cpu start with cpu show the hierarchy suppose there is l1 cache then you can show l2 then we can go through l3 because i am topping in terms of cache in our architecture so this is ln now assuming that uh, this is the hierarchy hierarchical access and uh, definitely the data item what we are searching is is definitely present in any of this and if it is in terms of hierarchy but it is not present in the starting one it may be find out in the last one okay now in this case now l1 again the hit ratio h1 then t1 l2 h2 t2 and so on like this okay so this t1 is the access time for getting the data from cache l1 t2 is access time from getting the data from l2 and so on so what is t average time so t average if you can compare with the previous one in that case when there was simultaneous access if it is found in first case obviously here also if we have been so lucky we mean cpu has been so lucky we find out everything in this first case so it will be h1 and t1 i hope all of you agree the data has been found over here and the things have been done okay but suppose if there's a miss if in first case there we didn't found that so there's a miss 
So what we'll do? One minus h1. So there's a miss. It will take its own time. Now, if it is not there, then it will go to this and it can find out h2. Okay, h2. Now, what's the change I can have? If you can see over here, I just mentioned s2 and the time to because it was t2. Directly, you can have this t2. In this case, because it work, it's working on this terminology. First of all, either it is uh, you need to go to t1, then t2, then only you can access that. So same happens over here. One minus h2 is the miss rate over here. Then you find out uh, s2, but the time because it's working in that hierarchical structure, so the timing will be t2 plus t1 because it needs to first of all whatever data you may find out directly it will not jump to cpu it will come over here and then only it will be accessible to cpu so this will migrate to this that is a very important thing now suppose if it's not find out in l2 also then what you will do okay what how the formula is going to take shape and there is no need to under learn everything in terms of you know learn by heart you can understand the concept. Suppose if uh, here not found and data is found over here. So what will happen? First of all, there will be a miss over here. Then there will be miss over here and we can have a hit over here. So how to represent this? So this hit will be what? First of all, there is a miss M1 minus H1. Then 1 minus H2 also is missed. And then data is found over here. So you may have H3, which is a hit over here. But according to time, if it is, had been, you know, the direct access. So I will just write T3. But in this case, it will be T3 plus T2 plus T1. And why this? I will show you through some other ink. Suppose I'm showing you green. Suppose the data is find over here. What you are searching for data is here. So directly CPU will not access. First of all, this data will come to this part. So this is T3 is time over here. Then T2 time over here. This will come over here then T1. So it means that and then it will come to CPU. So T3 plus T2 plus T1, this is the timing and so on. I hope you understood. This may go in continuum and plus at last we'll assume that if it is nowhere, it is fine in the last, uh, you know, block, the last cache level. So one minus H2 and then we can continue one minus HN minus one. Definitely if it is not there anywhere, it can find it out and HN and then you need to compute the time of T, uh, you know, uh, N plus T N minus one and so on plus T2 plus T1. So this is the concept that I was willing to discuss with you people. I hope you understood that uh, there are two type of memory organization. First is simultaneous and the second is hierarchical. Hierarchical is much better, much default because uh, as you go through simultaneously, there may be its own pitfalls. There may be its own, you know, pros and cons. So that's why many of the systems, they prefer hierarchical access. So before I shall move to uh, my next topic of mapping and different replacement algorithm. So I, I am just open for your questions and then we can take some uh, numerical questions based on the problem. Okay, so sir, I will just, uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, sir, if the application doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't have temporal or spatial uh, access pattern and it, suppose if it access random, it makes random access in a large memory. What is the best here? Hierarchical or uh, non hierarchical? Uh, yeah, hierarchical we, uh, then, uh, then we can create working set window. Uh, working set window is a concept that is more uh, related to operating system that I have not spoken because of, you know, the constant. But uh, if you feel so, there is a concept of working set window where we identify the frequent usually blocks also. That may be uh, that may be one of the answer of your question. But, uh, you know, if you're saying that uh, neither spatial nor temporal we can apply. So the, obviously the answer is that if it is no, then how can we apply locality of difference? So, sir, in that case, simultaneous access model will be beneficial, right? If the, all the access go to memory, then, you know, you get the better, best latency, correct? Uh, yes, you can say like that. It may be beneficial, but simultaneous access uh, comes by its own complexity. Because, you know, uh, it, as you can see that if the data is going to be present, you know, in two blocks or two memory locations, then we again, we need to see that there are different constraints to be followed. Although you are correct, what you said is perfectly right. But again, we need to migrate and we need to focus some other constraint also. That is not going to be very easy in terms of software perspective. Got it, sir. Thank you for uh, your answer. Thank for your question. Thank you. Any other? 
अगर डेटा यहाँ पे नहीं मिलता यू कैन कम अपार्ट ना डेटा इज एवेलेबल इन दिस केस इन दिस केस डेटा इज नॉट एवेलेबल इन यू नो एल वन बट इट इज प्रेजेंट इन वॉट दिस एच टू ओके ओके yeah okay thank you sir okay. any other question students let me check okay i will check whether there is any other hand raise so uh, ankita uh, you want to say something ankita is there any question i will allow the mic for you thank you sir now have yeah. a nice day Goodbye yeah, sure. again. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.